Thank you for joining us on another Cash or Trash episode. I'd like to warn everybody that some of these videos may be a little upsetting to some of you because we may be talking a little bit of trash about some of these brands, especially if you work for the company, if you own any of these brands, or if you're just a fan of them, we may talk a little bit of trash and knock them down a peg or two. But there may be some good stuff as well, so check it out. back at it with another Couch or Trash episode. In today's video, like the title says, it's a pair of Quadro boots that we've already done a recrap video on. So if you wanna check that out beforehand, link is in the description down below. If you wanna see what it's like on the inside or anything, but otherwise, let's jump into it for the Couch or Trash rating on these guys. So again, thank you for joining us. And we're finally doing a pair of Quadro boots. I've had a few of them in before for recraft, but I've never done any kind of recraft videos on them and definitely haven't done a Couch or Trash episode on them for sure. So um, if you have seen the video with the recrafting and stuff, you already know what my opinion is on them. But otherwise, if you haven't yet, um, you could definitely do a shorter version of you know, me explaining the things I like and don't like about these boots. So we'll start out by saying Quadra boots, they come out of Mexico and are Quadra, I guess. I don't know why I say Quadro because a lot of people are calling it Quadro, but it's actually Quadra. Um, but uh, so because they're coming out of Mexico, they've got the US and Mexican sizing in there, which was very different than what I was expecting. So full heads up on that if you decide you want to look into a pair. Um, these boots here in particular, they're, they just call it the uh, engraved black leather uh, boots because they've got the engraving here on this little strip down the center and they are made out of deer skin. So they're super soft. Um, I mentioned this in my recraft video, the super soft leathers, some people love them, some people hate them. There's a lot of pluses and minuses to it. Super soft leather is definitely going to feel nice. It's going to be a little bit more breathable and it will stretch, especially if you have a wider foot and they feel a little snug, they're going to stretch a lot more easily. However, if you have a narrow foot, that leather is going to stretch. So um, because if you've got a narrow foot, they're going to stretch and it's going to be a little bit of a problem in other words. The other thing is the indentation that are going to be left behind, even if you didn't scuff the boot at all, but uh, you ended up kicking something or you kind of dug your heel into the toe here on the boot itself, there's going to be a permanent indentation. Unfortunately, with softer leathers like deer skin, elk skin, lamb skin, goat skin, all of those much softer leathers, those are the major downsides so i want to kind of get that out of the way and everything and for those reasons you definitely don't want to use any kind of harder waxed products either so like the wax jar tins or anything don't want to use it on soft leathers like this but the boot overall let's go ahead and dive down into it um we'll start out with material qualities this one's going to be a little bit of a tougher one because there's a lot of great stuff like the deer skin they're really nice and everything However, there are some things that I also don't like. One of which is, so we'll start out with, this is the original sole. Obviously you can tell it's still brand new, never worn, but they do kind of this uh, rubber, uh, semi-transparent rubber, so you can read the quadro inside with, uh, with the leather and everything. And unfortunately, anytime you have a combination sole like that, um, if the rubber is right there in that center, and if it's transparent especially, transparent materials aren't nearly as durable as a solid ones. So that may be a little bit of a downside for some of you out there. The other really major downside that I really did not like is the cork. The cork that they use to fill it, you can see there's still chunks, is unfortunately one of the cheaper grade of corks and it has a tendency that even on a brand new pair, you can kind of tell how chunky it is. It's like weird and everything. But um, after a period of time of wearing it, say you've worn them for 500 miles or something or a few years even before you need them resold, that cork is gonna shift around in such a weird way inside it like it's like dust basically it doesn't have enough of a binding agent where it doesn't shift around and that's a major flaw in that um, as far as the heel block it is a uh, fiberboard heel block it's not a leather stacked heel base unfortunately um, so for some people that could be a drawback I don't mind it um, I prefer a leather one but it's definitely still better than a solid wood one or a plastic heel base which you see a lot these days in boots especially in the price level that these are out which we'll get to in the end 
Otherwise, overall, everything else as far as material goes is phenomenal. The deer skin that they've got is really nice and supple and everything. They've got nice leather liners on the inside and everything. So definitely, um, just because there are some drawbacks, but there are also some pluses, I'm probably gonna have to give the material quality, I'd say probably about a seven on that. We'll just, I'll be kind of honest. I have to give it that seven. Build quality. Now, build quality on these is very nice. I really do like it. There's a lot of good pluses and stuff like that um, on them as far as the way they construct it and everything. They've got the zipper in here. It seems like a lot of their boots have the zipper on the side. So if you've got a prosthetic leg or if you have a really high instep, these are phenomenal for a person like that because they come with that zipper on them. Some of their other models, they don't have that but a lot of them I've noticed they have that zipper in there too so uh, build quality overall like between all the stitching the way they've got the welts and everything like that these are actually very well constructed all together just just the way they are um, the only other drawback I don't know if you'd want to put this into the material quality or the build quality but the little nails that they use to hold it up because they're a 360 welt that uh, those nails are a little bit iffy and the other thing is that this stitching that you might be able to see down the center right there that's actually just a decorative piece it has no functional purpose whatsoever so that may um you know kind of pull back on you know the um the durability of it uh it's it's strictly just an appearance thing and unfortunately because they end up having to put that stitch in there it can become a weak point um, so i'd have to kind of put it into that build quality as well so for build quality overall let's give these guys uh probably an eight just because there's only a few small things like the nails and that stitching there it could be part of the material quality technically too but we'll give it an eight uh, comfort. Now, comfort's going to be a debatable one. Um, they do have a full length insole with some cushioning in there. Uh, they've, they're they definitely a western style boot, but because they've got that nice liner inside, which I haven't really shown you guys, but uh, there is that liner in there. We can consider the zipper as part of the comfort quality because you can end up getting it on and off a little more easily. So, a comfort, I'd probably, for a western boot, I'd have to bump these up to like a nine, honestly, just because there's a lot of nice, comfortable features to it and everything. The cork is going to be a little bit questionable, but that's where we start getting into more of a support aspect of things. Um, as far as uh, the overall support, obviously they're not a supportive type of brand, but they do have that nice arch support in there because of the way the shank is and it's got a heel. However, the cork that's inside is supposed to shift around and kind of mold to the foot a little bit more, make it almost like a custom orthotic feel, as well as add additional features like insulation and everything and all that kind of stuff. But for the support features of it, Unfortunately, that's gonna be a huge drawback with that cheaper cork, and that's one of the reasons why I love doing these Cash Trash episodes on a pair that I've already done a recraft video, or at least a recraft on, so I know what's going on inside as far as materials. The um, the support, I'm probably gonna to have to honestly drop that down just, be, just because that cork plays a big, big role once it molds to your foot. It's supposed to be part of the support feature, so I'm gonna probably have to give these like a 6.5 on the support just because of that. Um, collectability, that's going to be a debatable one, but we'll give them probably, I don't know, because, I mean, it says quadro all over the side. Um, you don't exactly see quadros all over the place. So maybe we'll give these maybe about a seven. Show off ability, I mean, they're deer skin. I mean, you, you got deer skin boots, maybe somebody won't be able to tell right away because I didn't, I wasn't 100% sure if these were even deer skin. They felt like it, they looked like it, but I just wanted to be sure because I've seen cowhides that were treated the same way and then some and it ended up looking like deer skin. But show off ability just because they're deer skin, probably give them a eight, I guess. Uh, maintenance, uh, maintenance is gonna be fairly basic and everything on them with the deer skin especially. Again, you're not going to be able to get it perfect. You're not going to be able to get certain blemishes or little scuffs out and everything. So your maintenance has to be as minimal and as basic as possible. Just using very light cleaners. Don't use anything harsh or strong on it. No alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol, no acetone, no thinner, none of that kind of stuff. Unless you know what you're doing. Um, your strongest uh, cleaning agent would probably be Reno Mat. Otherwise, try to stick towards like easy cleaners or um, saddle soap as well. Um, but as far as 
conditioning them, just a basic conditioner, nothing too heavy, no straight main coil, no straight lanolin. It has to be something that's kind of like in between because it's soft. Remember, soft leathers, the more harder the uh, conditioner is, the more you're gonna break down that, that leather and it's gonna become way too soft and it's gonna start to degrade, unfortunately. So maintenance is gonna be simple as long as you've got something simple for a conditioner. Uh, Saphir Universal is probably gonna be my pick or Renovator. Um, Saphir Universal, if I'm gonna use it in combination with also a pigmented cream, so like the Pomodier colored creams, I have to get one, but uh, one of these guys, for example, um, then I'd use the uh, Saphir Universal in combination with this. If I'm just using one product, one product only, the uh, Renovator would be the one I'd go to. Otherwise, cleaner uh, cleaners, you're going to be debatable. you got Lincoln Easy Cleaner, Saddle Soap. You've got uh, Angelus Easy Cleaner. you got a lot of light cleaners that you would use, basically. Um, so maintenance is going to be a nine. You can't really mess it up or screw it up. Just don't use straight mink oil. Don't use straight lanolin. That's all I'm going to say. Do not use that and don't use hard waxes on these because, again, soft leather. So recraftability. That one's going to be a fairly straightforward, easy one to do just because they're constructed like a standard uh, Western boot. There's nothing too crazy about it and nothing too horrible. There's no, not much room to kind of screw up, in other words. So recraftability, I mean, uh, I would say I'd have to drop it to an 8.5 just because there may be that potential issue down the road that if you have any kind of troublesome things with the zipper or anything that may add to additional costs and stuff like that however if the zipper is perfect for you and it's already installed there's no that that means that you need that zipper and you're not needing to pay for the installation of a brand new pair of boots to have a zipper installed but down the road these zippers will eventually give out um, because this is a softer leather and everything eventually you'll have like little creases in certain spots which do become weak points in this area of the zipper so you may end up having to replace the zipper or get it repaired or something down the road so that's the only reason why i'm gonna have to drop it down to an 8.5 because in the recraftability aspect of things there's just a little more that can go wrong when the boot has a zipper like this especially on a softer leather keep in mind though that part of that being dropped down to 8.5 is because it's a softer deer skin and softer deer skin there's a lot more limitations when it comes to getting that upper to look perfect it's not going to be perfect ever again now for the price point like i mentioned for that price point obviously earlier in the video what i meant by is that these things retail for 2.99 on their website which for a western boot that has deer skin on it and it's got a zipper already on it that's a crazy good price i'll, I'll be honest and i mean so considering a western boot at 2.99 that's that's actually a fairly low price but it's still a little bit higher than some boots out there but those lower priced boots are almost like in a whole nother category of not not the best but just because they're still a little more expensive than some boots that you'll find out there i'll probably put them at a low to medium price point um yeah so low medium just because they're still more expensive than some boots out there that i've seen for like 150 160 180 bucks but those boots don't even come close to what these are. And we got a little one joining us here. But anyways, what do I say about them? If you haven't seen my uh, full recraft video, what my opinion is on it, obviously from the sound of it, I'm gonna say cash on these. Because for 300 bucks, you got a deerskin boot with a zipper already on it. That is a crazy good price. Now obviously there's a few small drawbacks on it, but if the plan is to have these boots for many years and you're gonna have them recrafted and stuff by a good cobbler, these things are very well worth it. For $300, these things will last for a long, long time, even with recrafting and you can have upgrades done. That's what this gentleman had done was he had a Vibram Mini Lug sole put on there um, instead of this sole here. So definitely a well worth it uh, value in my opinion on these guys. Um, there are some things like if they were to upgrade on them, obviously they'd be more expensive, but um, for the price i mean there's not much room to complain about them honestly um that cork there i i mean i've had boots and stuff with the same type of cork and it breaks down when it comes time just re have it recrafted you can have that cork replaced and everything um at least most of the time you'll have it replaced but anyways hope you enjoyed the video definitely check out the full recraft video if you haven't already down below subscribe and hit that notification bell icon to be notified when we have our next recraft or 
either a recraft video, cash or trash episode, or who knows whatever else we might have as well. Could be another giveaway, you never know. So we'll see you next time.